It's time for another round of Hot GPT. Our topic today is how do you scale a part-time venture? Okay, ready to go. Start generating. So why? Why am I asking about this? Well, our guest on Thursday, Rani Kumra, she's got a bunch of jobs. Seriously, she's got like three jobs. But one of her cool jobs, well, they're all pretty cool, but the one we're talking about on the show is a company she started called Spicewell, which is Ayurvedic salt and pepper and spices. And she started this as a kind of side project during the pandemic. And it's kind of taken off. I mean, she is she is gangbusters. I've tried the product. I like it. And she was on QVC. I saw that on Instagram. Nice job, Rhina. So, you know, this has taken off. And the question, though, is sort of like, how does somebody who starts something as a side project out of their house during a pandemic, how do they turn that into a business? Can they scale it? And because that's, you know, the name of the game. A lot of people, you know, they want to scale a business up. Now, not everybody, by the way, not everybody is looking to do that. Some people just want to like, you know, sell the product at the farmer's market. And Ryan could probably do that too, by the way. She could make it out of her kitchen and sell it somewhere. But she's obviously, she's on, you know, QBC. So she's not making her kitchen anymore. So the question is, how do you do it? How do you take this idea from something that, you know, is sort of a hobby all the way up to becoming a business that theoretically you could actually go and just do full time. That is the question I want to talk about today. And it's obviously, for those of you who've been around for a while, it's near and dear my heart, this topic, because my book, The 10% Entrepreneur, does tackle this. A lot of people start a business as a part-time passion project. Or they just start it part-time because they don't have the cash, the cash, to be able to go full-time. You know, there's a bunch of different reasons why people start part-time. And you see examples all the time of people then sort of eventually taking these things into becoming a full-time business, right? Now, that can take years. It can take months. It really depends on a bunch of stuff. But one of the big things, before we talk about, you know, how to do it, one of the big things to think about is what kind of business are you starting? So it is really hard to start a business part-time if that business is deeply capital intensive. So if you need tons and tons of money to do it, unless you're just really rich and then, you know, have at it. But if you need, for example, external sources of capital, tons of that kind of money to start something, it's just hard to do that as a side project, right? So if you're going to be doing like a prototype for a medical device, I mean, maybe, I mean, if it's a simple one, sure. But if it's capital intensive, no, that's big. Another thing about sort of side projects is if it's incredibly labor intensive, it's hard. So that's where the internet comes in and why the internet's so wonderful because if it's digital, if it's a digital product, for example, that you just make one and then you sell a million times, or if it's something where you can easily outsource the production and then sell it online, then it's a lot easier to do that. So thinking about the nature of the business you're starting, that's gonna be an important determinant as to whether you can do it part-time. So that's just a, a starting point. But what we're gonna do after the break is I'm gonna give you you know, some key things to think about in terms of scaling a part-time business and maybe even going full-time. So we'll catch that right after the break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, Pat GPT talking about how to scale a part-time venture. Not easy, but not that hard either, depending on what you're doing. So let's start with number one. Let me just hit you with the obvious stick here. (laughs) Prioritize and optimize time management. And go back and find an episode I did with Nir Eyal. He's been on twice. His second time on, it's like season four or five. I should really look. This is very lazy, but forgive me. He has a book called Indistractable, and it's a great, great guy to sort of getting things done. We've had other people on the getting things done guy. Next week, we have Nick Sonnenberg, who wrote a book called 
come up for air, which is great. He's like a total productivity expert. So the stuff's out there. But just prioritizing because, I mean, I love the expression, if you want to know how to get things done, ask a busy person. That is true. But when you have a, a lot of obligations and you add something new to the top, you have to be ruthless about what's important, what are the priorities, and how to focus on those things. So that's number one. Again, it's an obvious one, but it has to be said. It would be negligent if I didn't bring that up. Number two, consider getting a co-founder. I'm telling you, it is so much easier to start a business with co-founders. As you know, I started a company this year, The X Quotient, executive coaching, but better. And I have two co-founders. Game changer. Seriously. I, I'm just like kicking myself for not having co-founders in everything all my life and everything I ever did. Like science, well, I had a science fair pro project partner, so I did have a co-founder there. But just having the accountability partner and also the person you can leverage and if they have complementary skill sets, amazing. So when you're doing a part-time project and you have limited time and resources and mind share and all those important things, another person being in the mix can keep you sane. You can get more things done. They have perspective. They could even go full-time maybe in my uh, in my travels around the world. I remember this wonderful entrepreneur, Zaid Husban from Jordan. He and his co-founders, like some of them kept working full-time, others went full-time and then they sort of like pooled their resources to start a company. It's fantastic. So co-founders can be powerful and these can be family members even. People do that all the time. We've had a million people on the show who started companies with their siblings, right? Your mom or dad. I mean, think about Patrick Schwarzenegger started a company with his mom. Their energy bars, we had that on in the past. So a lot of ways to do this. I'm just telling you, doing it alone. It's cool in a way because you don't have the pressure, but you don't have the pressure so you don't get as much done, all right? And the final one to think about, and this is all like, I would really encourage you to think about these things before you get too far along the path because you're going to save yourself some headaches. The third one to really think about is what can you outsource? And in particular, these days, I mean, for example, you can outsource so many things. If you're making a consumer product, co-packers, food products, like nobody makes anything anymore. Like nobody makes anything. It's all <laughs> outsourced. You can outsource a million things and there's people all over the world with internet connections that you can work with. So you can find talent everywhere and at good cost. And so it is really important to think about like, what can I outsource? of the things that I do so that I don't have to do that so that I can focus, you know, back to number one, prioritize. I can focus on what matters. So those are the things that I would encourage you to think about. And as you hear Ryan's story, listen for some of these things. She's been very clever about it. Now, she's also just, she's a very talented individual, right? So she's she's sharp. But she she's been smart about leveraging herself and also figuring out ways to cut out the fat to scale this business. All right, I will see you on Thursday with another episode of FOMO Sapiens. Until then, take care of yourselves and Pat GPT, stop generating. FOMO. FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMOSapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.